Can I just point out your way if I don't hit this with copyright for that, please? Thank you. <laughs> Very accurate. Oh, I do like that. I do like that little noise. Is it becoming a re reality now? Because it was a dream, but I think it's becoming a reality. It is finished here at St. James's Park, Newcastle United 3, Southampton 1. And this is the last word. And we're back at St. James's Park. Last week we beat Spurs 6-1, and this week it's another win. It's nine points. It's eight wins for the last nine games. And Newcastle sitting third in the Premier League table. We'll talk more about the Premier League table in a second. I'm with Lee. I'm with Harry for the last word. Lee, team news. Anthony Gordon gets a start, mm. which was a big, big talking point. I think a lot of people were happy to see that in terms of the, de the defence. Dan Byrne came back in for Matt Target. Mental. Absolutely mental. Were you happy with that team? Oh, though? look. Look what's happening. Per usual. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> um, people who can I say? How are, How are the lads? We'll get the Champions League. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Really? Tell me this is on going to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you there. Um, <laughs> Anthony Gordon. Yes, Anthony Gordon. Tell us about the team. Were you happy? Uh, I was obviously shown. We heard it. Uh, the, there's Ando. He's just looked over there. You yeah. kind of blanked him there, Johnny. I, I didn't see him. You didn't see him. No, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> see him. Um, Sorry, Ando. Great commentary as always. Aye. Uh, yeah. um, a little bit because I thought it might be Joe Litton or Willock over there, but with Sean's injury, it kind of makes sense. Stick everybody back in the natural position and set the midfield and there's a winger position up for grabs. I, I didn't think he would start Isaac out there, I really didn't. So a little bit, because well, you could obviously put Murphy there and start Almiron, probably would have expected that, but got his chance um, in different first half, didn't he? But um, I expected Burn to come back in. Uh, I actually expected Isaac to start, believe it or not, even though Wilson scored a couple the other night, which is harsh on him. Yeah, very harsh. I, might, I think you might have a, a couple of words to say to Eddie Howe after the game today about next week against Arsenal. But Harry Southampton started the better of the two teams and I think they deserve their lead at half-time. We'll talk about the goal in a second, but in the first minute, I think it was Mr. Ginepa who cut in. and it was a, it was a, I would say it was just about a comfortable save for Nick Pope, but it, he was made to work very early on and Southampton weren't afraid to really attack Newcastle. Yeah, I think it was. It, I think it was Walker Peters with a shot on target um, right. down to Nick Pope's right. But um, yeah, they, they did. They started the brighter of the two teams. Newcastle looked off it for me. I think Fabian Cher started very slow. Uh, Bruno as well. And I think we just looked a little bit, a little bit flat in a sense. But um, is it understandable because it is three games in a week? Obviously, two games in probably about two and a half, three days at the end, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Busy schedule and obviously with the TV and stuff. Um, Thursday to Sunday, that's, that's what most people complain about Thursday to Sunday. It's a lot easier playing Wednesday to Saturday, so so a lot of people in football tell you. So, yeah, I don't think they helped helped by the schedule, but it's the same for a lot of teams. Man United played on Thursday and played on played today, so it's not you can't really complain about that, but, yeah, ultimately, Southampton started brighter and, and I wouldn't say they necessarily deserved to go in at half-time, but I, I don't think either side did, really. It was a bit flat. I think Harry was right. It, it, I, I don't know whether it was because, obviously, of what happened in the last two games and the fact that we didn't start brilliantly. It was just kind of like, well, we just needed something. But that's something that he came from Anthony Gordon. He had a shot that hit the side net. And I think some people on the Gallagher thought it was in for a second. And then he had that big chance one-on-one. -on -one, and he has to score for me. He does a great ball by Isaac again. Dropping deep, spinning, playing it through. He's not just a goal scorer, he's a creator. So Anthony Gordon's one-on-one. -on -one. And McCarthy's not the greatest goalkeeper in the league. I think he's right up there with um, the Welsh lad from uh, Leicester who's now on the bench. I've got his name. Danny Ward. Yeah, those two for me are the worst keepers in the league. They're awful. Well, I think McCarthy hasn't been starting half the season because he's behind Bazunu, who's got like the worst save rate in the league or something. <laughs> so it says, it says a lot about his uh, quality. It was only two. It was only that was only his second appearance of the season. He came in for Bazunu on Thursday against Bournemouth. Yeah, they've they got crap keepers. Um, but I, I, Southampton um, were high pressing. That's that. That was ooh, that's a bit different because you don't normally get that. It's normally us doing that. We couldn't cope. It was forcing us into mistakes. Yes, we didn't really test the goalkeeper. We had those two big chances and a few half half chances. But um, Nick Pope, Nick Pope, yeah, Bruno. Nick Pope wasn't massively tested. He was at the beginning, the start of Bright, as how he says. But I, if you looked at it, they probably shaded it for me just that they deserve it, but not massively. We're talking about Bruno's volley for a second there. Yeah, well, just just fell to him in the in the box in there on his left. That was just just after Isaac completely mistimed a header, which I think he should probably do better with. I don't want to criticise Isaac too much, um, but Bruno on the volley, left left foot, just, just gone wide. It's a pretty good chance, but I think as Lee says, Gordon's got to score one of those chances, his second chance, and he's got to be squaring that f that first one for me. I think Isaac and possibly Willock were in the box. Gordon's got to square it. He, 
I was surprised to see him come off at half time, but um, change was needed to be fair. Just a last thing on Anthony Gordon before we can hear this fantastic music in the background. Is, is Anthony Gordon a one trick pony at the minute? No, I think that's how I said he needs a run of games. He kind of just start and put him on the bench, put him on the bench, start and he needs that run. I think you'll get it once once we do qualify officially for the Champions League. I think you'll just then get the run out for start the last few couple of games. But the one thing I noticed about him today, which he wants to then cut back out, he'll come in and then cut back out and try and take on a player. Get it in, just get it in, simple. You'll, Eddie Howe will work on that and cut that out because Jacob Murphy kept doing that. Alex at maximum is, is accused of that a lot as well. So... It's not out of ESM's game yet, but it will be eventually, I feel. But yeah, he's. I think it's harsh just picking on him a little bit because I think Murphy was shite first off as well. I think it was just bad. Yeah, it was. It wasn't great. And Southampton capitalised from that, Harry. It was Stuart Armstrong who scored for Southampton. Bruno got caught on the ball. And I thought Lavia actually had a good game for Southampton today. I think he was really impressive. And I can see where the big boys were after him as well. But um, obviously, Bruno gets. It gets, gets the ball taken off him in our own half. Southampton capital, capitalise on that and Alvarez plays it towards the right-hand side. Cross comes in, Stuart Armstrong finds space six yards out and Newcastle are 1-0 down. I, I think it was deserved, I have to be honest. I know we had a couple of chances, but I don't think we were brilliant, especially at the back in the first half. But if anything, it was a wake-up call, wasn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, it was. But um, I, th I think we still kind of controlled that first half. I, don't think, I, th I think Southampton largely went missing during the middle period but they got the best chance, which was Stuart Armstrong's goal. Um, yeah, it was... Ooh. What a catch by Lee Law. Incredible. You'd think he plays cricket. Um, Cat-like reflexes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a wake-up call. Obviously, Gordon comes off at half-time. Uh, Eddie Howe switches Isaac to the left, and he just looked electric, didn't he? He was just brilliant in that. It, it sprung us into life a bit, and that is what we needed. Yeah, it certainly was. Do you think it was a point, not a point to prove every, I think that's probably the wrong phrase from Callum Wilson when Eddie Howe brought him on at half time, but it was just kind of like Callum Wilson going, you need to start me week in, week out, because that's what I can do. It's a bold movement, isn't it? It's, like I say, you could have took either winger off and I don't think any one of us would have been like, oh well, just um, Gordon because Murphy's probably having a better run of form, but it's a fantastic piece. He's realised it, thought, you know what, I'm going to use the substitution, put Isaac out on that left, scare them. Goal scoring machine Callum Wilson's on fire, and that's he's on fire because he's on he's got a threat now with uh, Isaac. So for me, he starts. I know we'll talk about his goal, but he has to start up front next week against Arsenal. But it was a great great decision and right decision. Look, it changed the second half. It completely changed the dynamics. And you know we've been accused of having dark art by certain managers. So that we're doing that in the first half. It's been clever. So they were doing it, so if you're winning the game, you slow the game doing it, naturally. We start, we've done that how many times this season, but part and, part, part and parcel of football, get used to it. Yeah. Newcastle did equalise and it was Callum Wilson. Harry, tell me all about Callum Wilson's first goal for Newcastle today. Um, yeah, so it started from Dan Byrne on the left, I believe, Pl played it uh, down the line to Isaac. Isaac drives, pushes forward, great ball in perfectly to Callum Wilson's feet and he's just tucked it away past Alex McCarthy and Southampton's goal, great finish and it's, it's, it's exactly what we needed. Callum Wilson is on absolutely on fire at the minute. Can't knock him, people, people were knocking him in the last, what, 10 days, two weeks or so, maybe further back than that, but he's just on incredible form and I think he's knocking on Gareth Southgate's, Southgate's door again. Be interesting because obviously Ollie Watkins is for in form, Ivan Tony's in form as well, so it's going to be a real fight to try and get into that England squad at this moment in time. Um, Lee Sven Botman actually had a chance before that, so he should have really put it away. Um, so Alex McCarthy made a good save and then actually made a really good save on the rebound as well. But Newcastle thought they went 2 1 up nice. um, from Callum Wilson. It again was great work down the left hand side, and it was a kind of it was just kind of like Callum Wilson was at the right place at the right time. He put it in the back of the net, lines keeps his flag down and lets VAR decide. And, Again, I haven't seen the benefit of the replay, but it seems to take such a long time. I'm thinking, is it a clear and obvious error in terms of is it definitely offside? But VAR well, decided it, it was offside. It's interesting, Taylor didn't go and check, did he? So it was looked at, it was a good two minutes. They were looking at it, so it must have been tight. So they've obviously done some, I don't know, it's probably his toenail. It's probably his eyelash, that's offside. So, but look, if it, it didn't affect us, thankfully. The crowd were on the up anyways. It, it bounced, the place was starting to bounce a little bit. Um, but it, it'll be tight. But it's interesting. It just didn't go at the monitor, so it couldn't have been that. Couldn't have been that clear because normally they would say, "Oh, you need to go and look at it." But it didn't. 
It's pretty rare that they get them to look at an offside at the monitor. It's only happened. I think it's only happened once or twice. It's only really when if they feel that like they're interfering with play. Yeah, yeah. It's whether there's a doubt about a player interfering, isn't it? Which there clearly wasn't because Miggy's just passed it on to Wilson to finish it off. He just must have been. Yeah, it must have been a tight offside. But it didn't really stop Newcastle in their tracks, Lee, and Newcastle eventually went 2-1 up, but there was corner after corner after corner, and I thought Kieran Trippier's set pieces today were brilliant, and the set piece came in, and I think Botman gets a flick on it, and it just hits the Southampton, I don't know who scored the own goal, I do apologise, because it was it was given as a Bruno goal, but it certainly wasn't, um, I think I believe it was a Southampton defender that maybe, it maybe just hit off towards, uh, before it went in the back of the net, but it, it didn't really matter really, because Newcastle, in terms of the goal being disallowed for VAR, they got over it quite quickly. We were getting going two one up. It was just what we needed. It was coming. It was coming. It was pressure. No after and after, and all the fans were come here, come on, screaming for a corner and everything. We had a succession of corners, and we don't uh, score loads of late as the camera goes again. Yeah, yes, so it didn't really matter for Newcastle in the end. They ended up getting that goal after the VAR cancelled the last goal. So Newcastle. And it was a case that we just needed that goalie, wasn't it? In the sense of get the two one, and then we can kind of relax because it hits off the Southampton defender when it hits when Botman heads it across goal, and Newcastle deserved it. Yeah, as I say, the crowd were literally pumping, ready for it. They were up for it. The, the atmosphere just went up. How many decibels? I don't know, but it was corner after corner pressure. Southampton were a little bit all over the place. So they were arguing with the referee at certain times as well. The heads were starting to go a little bit. And um, yeah, the corner comes in from Trippier, it's headed on by Botman, it kind of takes a deflection. Uh, obviously we haven't seen it back, we've only just literally come out the ground, but everyone's pointing at Botman, so we all think it's Botman because Dan Burns pointing and I think another player comes over, but um, obviously the announcer gives it a Bruno, I don't even think it's Bruno's goal to be fair, I mean we could be wrong, but uh, it's easier said than done now, we've uh, came out and we've seen it afterwards, but 2-1, uh, I didn't think we're that comfortably, I still want that extra goal cushion to enjoy ourselves and it, we weren't waiting long. We certainly didn't wait too long at all, Harry, and Callum Wilson, basically, if, if, if anybody can remember Looney Tunes, that's what Southampton's defence was for that third goal. <laughs> rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. So, the ball just keeps just comes back, and Callum Wilson was offside initially, but Joe Willock decides to go, I'm going to chase this ball, I'm going to keep chasing it, and he keeps chasing it, puts pressure on the Southampton defender. Wilson is with him, and literally it was a case of, he, he manages to get that extra touch in the box, Fakes the shot, takes it around the goalkeeper, puts it in the back of the net, and that, that's all, folks. Yeah, brilliant determination from Willock. Brilliant and just relentless pressing. Just didn't give up on it. It's what it's exactly what you want. Kind of, kind of thing that you just want to see. Kind of thing that you want to see from a Southampton point of view as well. They seem to give up on it a little bit. Uh, and brilliant forward play from Wilson. Very composed. Take it around the keeper. Easy as you like. Back of the net. Three-one. Lovely stuff. It was a case of lovely stuff as well, and it was it was a case that Southampton tried to do, they tried to get back in it, but they brought the likes of Theo Wolcott, Adam Armstrong on, but it was just it wasn't enough for Southampton. That was, I don't see Newcastle taking on Southampton next season in, in the Premier League, which isn't a massive shock. Thank any, God, thank yeah. God, because that means we don't have to do that travel, because we've done it twice this season. So, and point out, we're just as Southampton fans, giving it large as well, uh, we sell out our games. You can't even sell out on a Sunday. Early kickoff, that's disappointing. We only sold three blocks. Poor. Well, we'll see what happens with them. I've had a go at all these fans this week, haven't I? I've been a bit of a bit of a shit house we have now this week. <laughs> I've enjoyed Can't. myself. I've enjoyed myself this week, everyone. Can't wait for Arsenal next week. Uh, yeah, but it finished Newcastle United three, Southampton one, and Newcastle stay third in the Premier League table. Eddie Howe must be delighted that he's managed to secure his eighth win out of the last nine games. Eddie, tell me all about Newcastle United being minted football. It was eventful, there was a lot happened in that game. Um, disappointing first half for us. I thought Southampton played well, they defended well. We couldn't break them down and get that first goal that we needed. But a great response second half, you know, that was a key moment for us, 1-0 down. Uh, and the players did exceptionally well in that second period. Yeah, it was no reflection on his performance, although Anthony did really well. Um, yeah, he could have scored, as you say, he had probably our best moments of the half. But I felt I needed to get Callum on the pitch and unfortunately someone had to be sacrificed. And yeah, it was him. The crowd have been exceptional since I turned up at the football club. They've, I think, and immediately they knew we were in a relegation battle and helped us over the line in that quest. And this season they've they've really supported us. And again, in difficult moments like today, when at half time we come off and probably be a disappointing performance, they were in the game right from the minute uh, we came back out and uh, they helped us over the line. And we are back, uh, Harry. I want to talk about Isaac and Wilson. Isaac to start on the left against Arsenal. Does it have to be that now? For me, it does. Yeah, um, bit 
bit tough on Gordon because I, I didn't think he was dreadful. He still provided an outlet on that left, but you play your best 11, especially against the league leaders. And for me, that is Isaac on the left and Callum Wilson up top. And that's the way it's got to be. Isaac looks a threat from the left-hand side. I know his assist didn't count against Everton on Thursday, but it's two two games now where he's played, I don't know, 45 minutes, half an hour or so out on the left. He's got two assists and he's looked still the same player that he's, he does up front. So I think you can't really complain. Eddie Howe's clearly, maybe not clearly, but it's unlikely that he's going to start them together in a 4-4-2. So I think you stick him out on the left and say, this is my best 11. Go and, go and prove to me why you deserve saying it. Yeah, very much so. Uh, we're going to get the Premier League table up in a second. Manchester United have beaten Aston Villa by a goal to nil. When you look at the terms of the top four race, obviously City have won and they're now top and Bournemouth have beaten Leeds, which just doesn't mean anything for us, which is really nice to hear. 71 will be enough with our, with our goal difference unless Liverpool or Brighton really do something stupid. Can we say now it's done or is it still a little bit of work to do? I think you need to answer your own question because you're the, you're the one that's doubting it a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't. So is it done then? You answer it. <laughs> I'm asking you. Well, it's not done yet, no. So you're doubtful then? No, I'm not <laughs> doubtful. I think we're nearly there. But now, as I say, the last game at Everton, the one before that at home here, yeah, if we blow this up, we're all going to be sat here and think, fuck, however we blew that. You're all going to say, yeah, Europa League is a great consolation prize. It's not now. Not, not in the position that we're in. Because we've gone from like, the, the rise from 18 months is just from bottom of the league to top the league sitting third at the minute if we drop to fourth I'm alright with that as long as we get Champions League we could have more tiers next Sunday if we, we fuck up Arsenal's chances we did last season for top four we could with the title who knows Arsenal not going to come here this is the one team that everybody wants to avoid playing Arsenal going to come here and think oh fucking hell you know what I mean they're not going to be confident coming here we're the ones who've got practically now to lose so bring on Arsenal you know, it's, it's a different kind of pressure you know we were all like Around about this time, we started to move up the table and pull away from relegation 12 months ago. That was a different kind of pressure. This is a healthy pressure because it's it's money in the bag if you get it higher calibre of competition. It's European trips, which we're all going to love taking the channel abroad. So, yeah, I think it's it's nearly there. Um, even if, and then that said, you just off camera before, we can afford a defeat. We can afford a defeat now, so we've got that luxury. So even if it comes next week in Arsenal, so what? We'll, we'll bounce again at Leeds, so... I'm going to ask you the same question, is it done? Because without knowing the Liverpool Spurs result, Liverpool, Liverpool or Spurs are going to drop points, so it doesn't make a massive difference in that, in that respect, but Aston Villa, can't, Aston Villa mathematically can, but they'd have to win the last four games and we, we would have to drop off, we would have to drop off the face of the earth really, and that's not going to happen, I don't think so. Is it a case of, if Liverpool win, it's Liverpool-Brighton who can chase Newcastle and Man United down, but they've still got so much work to do because of the fact that there's so many little games left. I think so, yeah. I think, for me, in terms of is it done, I think the easiest way to say it is it's, it's all but done. Newcastle only need a couple of results. Um, I think I said three wins in the match reaction. I think, I think we only need two wins and maybe maybe a point or two. Um, we've got favourable go games at home, you could argue. Leicester at home, Arsenal at home, um, Brighton at home. They're not easy games. Leeds away. Le Leeds, Leeds away is difficult. It is difficult, but Ever Everton away is difficult. Just about it. Yeah, yeah. The one team you want to play right now is Leeds. They're in free fall. They're in free fall, losing by three fours every week now. Bring on Leeds. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in a sense, but you've got to think that you've got to kind of anticipate some reaction uh, from Leeds. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. But for me, it's all but done, and I think it is Liverpool and Brighton. They they have to just win and win and win they have to go on a run and Brighton have got a lot of games left I think I think if they've still got Brighton six or seven Brighton have still got uh, I think six games left yeah yeah. so well, seven, I have no seven games sorry I tell why yeah so they, they've got a heavy schedule they're going to have to rotate and uh, they're playing uh, probably playing every three or four days for the majority of the rest of the season so it's going to be difficult for them and Brighton haven't got like the proven pre pedigree of going on a run like Liverpool have like obviously Manchester City have and like we have this season I don't think Brighton are going to win the last seven games in a row which makes it much more favourable to be in our position obviously and I think yeah I think it's all but done for me all but done says Harry you're pretty much agreeing with that all but done. Aren't you? Yeah, it's got to be, like I say, I said the last time, I'm just being a broken record now. We fuck up, yeah, we're all going to be crying more eyes out because to lose from this position and not qualify at the top four, 
and it's we're now into May effectively now it's the end of April now you're, you're in the, the business end of the season um, bring it on man it's exciting times being a Toon fan Why? don't be too nervous yet I think if we lose a game aye but we're, we can afford a loss so I just don't think Eddie Howe will go into that game against Arsenal thinking that they're going to lose I think I think there's gonna, it's going to be a special special atmosphere next week because I think they know I think one more win against Arsenal and I think you can safely say that's it, so game over. It might over. Not be Arsenal, it might be Leeds. Oh, it could be. I'm just, I'm just because Arsenal so, the next game. That's all. I think. I, I just think. Yeah. I just think if Newcastle win next week against Arsenal. And I want Leeds to steal. Just so we can get, go and get home early. We've got Sheffield United up. We've Burnley. got Burnley up and Middlesbrough. May, hopefully. Maybe Middlesbrough yeah. or a Blackburn. I didn't want Coventry are coming up or a West Brom or a, a Luton or Millwall. I'll not say anything else. I'll upset <laughs> some more fan bases. Um. Yeah, so who's man of the match for you, Dave? Well, is that a stupid question, Callum Wilson? Yeah, it's got to be. Callum Wilson comes on, changed the game, two goals. Um, could have had a, could have had a hat trick. He hit the bar, didn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, that that was unfortunate. And Elliot Anderson, bless him, was desperate to get get a shot away, get get his first goal. But um, yeah, Callum Wilson for me, man of the match, superb. Uh, just finally, before we end this video, Newcastle women's team have won by six goals to nil against Bradford City. Becky Langley's side are now top of the table with one game to go. They've won their games in hand. Lee Lawler is going to go down at the last day. They kick off at two o'clock next week against Barnsley away. Now, Barnsley could potentially be third depending on their results. Yeah, it's Worst, it's, 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 but to be fair, is that the best game sort of game for them because They've got to prove their worth if they want to be top. It, look, the, the goal difference is not a question anymore. It's, they've got a 10 goal difference swing. Durham aren't going to beat Chorley by 11 goals. It, it's in Newcastle's hands. Win ugly, don't care how you win. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go out and batter teams. You've got to win ugly and just get it. The nerves will be through the roof as well. It's a shame that the, the games are clashing. That's the yeah. annoying thing because we can't be there. We've covered them 15 plus games this season. Um, being in attendance home and away, but we are looking. So we are looking to maybe grab Becky for an interview um, once season before she goes on a trip to Mexico, because she will be thoroughly enjoying that. But yeah, you've just got you might you know what it is. You don't want to look at Durham, but they will because you've just got to match their result. You go up as champions. So I know the league's getting refreshed next season, but what a, what an achievement! And, and we've been talking about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. Those games in hand. Forget about it. They've gone now. Thank, thankfully, they've gone because that was always like if, if, if they've done the if, and now you win next week. Doesn't matter how you win, you go up, and of course, celebrations are in order. And good luck to the lasses. Beth Guy, Erin Nelson, Georgia Gibson on the score sheet. So congratulations to Beck. And it was a Valley Parade as well. Yeah, so great from Bradford City to obviously play a Valley Parade. Obviously, we did the opposite in terms of letting the girls play at St James's Park where they won six one. They've even better that they've won six nil at Valley Parade. So yeah, make sure you keep. Uh, keep oh, can up I just to give date. a shout out as well to all the um, Icelandic and Swedish mags who all came over as well? I said I'll mention them on video because it was absolutely loads of them today who were here today and they would have enjoyed that. They certainly would have done. But look. I'll say it again, two wins, one for the men's team, one for the women's team. If that happens next week, Newcastle are pretty much guaranteed Champions League football if they haven't already, and Newcastle and that women would be promoted to the next tier of the football pyramid, which is essentially like League One level in terms of you looking at it that way. So it's, it's, it's a massive, massive week next week. We'll have all the videos. There's Greenman and Mullen show as well going to be uh, on next week as well, so make sure you keep in touch with everything Newcastle fans TV related. Harry, thank you very much. Lee, thank you very much. I'm off to get my passport sorted because it's running out very, very soon. Like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV and we'll see you all very soon.